Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Onepro Bavarian and just today the Fallen Eagle released a new update. The mod that is set in the period of the downfall of the Western Roman Empire has introduced the rise of Islam with this update, creating a powerful endgame force that can threaten the established order massively. Not only will the player be forced to stare down a strong opponent or become a part of that opponent's realm should they be losing the stare down, but the update also comes with special Muslim mechanics. So let's explore this a bit. The update itself is meant to give the mod the push that it needs before the Royal Court will be released in February as the modders will then be rather busy adapting the mod to the new possibilities and challenges of CK3's 1.5 patch. The mechanics around the rise of Islam see the Caliphate under its Prophet Muhammad's spawn in the year 622 AD. If you want the Caliphate as a major player earlier, you can simply type Event Islam.0001 into your debug console and you will spawn it in Medina right away. Be wary however, the Caliphate is extraordinarily powerful, even more so in the early game. Now before we jump into the actual Caliphate mechanics, let me just tell you that if you enjoy me showcasing the CK3 mods that you know and love, then please make sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel because this helps me and makes it so that I can keep doing what I'm doing. Thank you so much. Alright, and with that out of the way, let's move on. When it comes to the Caliphate, Muhammad himself is not playable, but players may take control of subsequent rulers of the Caliphate, be that because they have taken it by force, were elected, or because they switched into the other character. So let's talk about the special mechanics related to the Caliphate. The Caliphate title itself has a special title succession law. The Rashidun elective is a title law that allows Muslims to elect their leader, although a few conditions are attached. Only those with a decent amount of wisdom, this means a score of at least 15 in either martial, diplomacy, stewardship or learning, may be elected. This can mean that even though one might be the son of a caliph, one may not be eligible to be the proper heir because, well, one is not exactly a wise man. Additionally, and this is especially relevant during the early succession within the Caliphate, all Sahabis are also eligible for election. A Sahabi is one of the original companions of Muhammad, which coincidentally are also the first historical caliphs. After Muhammad's death, the Rashidun Caliphate was established. Rashidun Caliphate means the Caliphate of the rightly guided caliphs. All four of these caliphs, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman and Ali, are Sahabis and represented within the mod as such. No matter who gets elected as caliph though, you can be certain that they will leave a mark on the world. The Caliphate gains massive amounts of troops every five years for as long as it exists to truly grow into its powerful role in this time period. It will also be able to use the troops properly as a caliph may call many, many jihads if their authority within the Muslim world is high enough. These jihads are not only kingdom level invasions, which is already incredibly powerful, no, they also give the caliph a powerful force of troops and they also have a decent chance to convert a sizable chunk of the conquered lands to Islam, immediately giving a strong foothold to the caliphate in the region. This is basically what will enable the caliphate to be a huge threat to you, no matter how much you conquered. As you can see, the caliphate is a force that you should not underestimate. However, this is of course not all. I mentioned that the Caliph must have authority to call jihads, right? But how does that work? Basically, the mod adds an entirely new interface in which you can see the Caliph's authority within the Muslim world. A Caliph's authority is mostly determined by his piety and by how many holy sites he actively controls. Having low authority may lead to others attempting to claim the Caliphate, but also to Muslim rulers refusing to pay the money they owe the Caliph. By this I mean the Zakah. The Zakah is one of the pillars of Islam and is a required donation that a pious person must do. A Caliph with a lot of influence will receive Zakah more frequently from their Muslim subjects, filling the Caliphate's treasury more quickly. This treasury can then, as you can see, be invested in many things, such as a shelter for the homeless, donations for the poor or road building measures for travelers and pilgrims. All this will have lasting positive effects for the Caliph's realm, further encouraging them to be a pious ruler in control of the Muslim holy sites. After all, otherwise they will be missing out on Zakar money and the attached benefits. The Muslim world itself is equipped with two forms of government, Caliphate and Islamic. Islamic rulers are generally any ruler under Islamic law. If they are Muslims themselves, they have a fairly standard contract behind their allegiance to their liege. The liege can, if they so please, make the payment of the zakah mandatory rather than voluntary. Should a vassal under the Islamic government form not be a Muslim, they will have an alternative clause in their contract that automatically makes it mandatory to pay the jizya, the tax for non-believers. The second government form in this hierarchy is called the Caliphate government and it is meant for any Muslim ruler that believes that they should be the Caliph or well that already is the Caliph. 
Having this government form will give you access to Jihad Wars and to the Caliphate Authority interface. And here's the fun part. Should you declare yourself Caliph, and there is already a different Caliph, for example the rightful holder of the Rashidun Caliphate, you can then challenge them to become the one true Caliph should you have higher authority. This system is basically able to emulate what occurred when the Abbasids kicked out the Umayyads and banished them to Iberia, declaring the Abbasid Caliphate the one true Caliphate. This system, all in all, is pretty neat since it all hinges on the recognition that you gain from the rest of the Muslim world by controlling its holy sites and by being pious. Now this is the gist of the Rise of Islam update for the Fallen Eagle. It introduces a few new mechanics and, most importantly, a major threat in the late game. On top of that, it should also be said that various bugs get fixed with this update and the Indian subcontinent receives a new government, the Gupta government. In this form of government, the main focus of the liege vessel contract is that of erecting a focus of either levies or taxes. This means that a liege can get a truly massive army should they focus a lot on levy commitments, just look at this percentage, or a large treasury should they do the opposite. On top of that, this government form introduces an inherent bias of rulers against other rulers that are the child of lowborn characters, implementing the caste system implicitly. The government forms I mentioned throughout the video will also be in the team's standalone mod Governments Plus, so make sure to check that out as well if you want to play with these government forms just in the normal CK3 game. Now last but not least, the team also added a game rule if you want to play Rome but are not that comfortable with the Imperial Competence mechanic, you can simply turn it off. And this basically brings us to the end of this video. As you can see, there's a lot going on with the Fallen Eagle. All the links that are necessary are in the description. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and for the moment, I will see you later, alligator.